Hey everyone, welcome to Keyboard Skills Pro. My name is Tom, I'm a professional musician and I live in the east of England. Today on my channel I thought I'd do a little piano tutorial uh, video on how to play Musette, which is in D major and commonly attributed to J.S. Bach, the famous guy who wrote that little number and obviously a huge amount more as well. Musette in D is a march style piece. It's lively, it's got some fantastic runs, some big left hand octaves, and for many years it's been a popular number on several of the exam boards, and it tends to pop up on grade two. Uh, and perhaps some of you are maybe working on this piece now. So if you are, let's take a little look. Uh, my score is uh, quite plain, there's very little fingering or dynamics, so we're going to try and put some of those in. But if you are, um, working on this for a grade, please obviously do make sure you pay close attention to any dynamics, uh, fingering and articulations in your piece, uh, particularly with your exam, and obviously make sure you uh, check with your teacher. But we're just going to take a little look through this piece today, and uh, let's take a look at D major. D major's got two sharps, it's the second of the sharp keys in the circle of fifths, and it's got an F sharp and a C sharp. So we could play some nice scales. Just get used to the D scale, D major chord, G major chord, and A major chords. And D and A, you will see those a lot in this piece. Tonic D, dominant A. Let's crack on with the piece. Here's the first part. The first part's eight bars long, and we've got lots of articulation in this piece. Articulation is the way you style the way your notes are played. Begin by moving your hand all the way down past middle C, this is your left hand, putting your thumb on the first D you come to, and your little finger on the D below that. That's the first position for your left hand. And we're going to start off with these two Ds playing in octaves. Now, if we play it like that, it's very boring. We've got staccato, so we're going to go one and two and. Remember, it's two four. It's a march, so the bottom note really has to mark the count. One and two and. Nice and short and snappy. Now those first two bars are pretty simple. The next hard bit is leaping over to this F sharp with your third finger. Okay. Now that first group which makes up the first beat is two semiquavers and a quaver. I like to use words to describe rhythm patterns. One of my favourites here is dinosaur. Dinosaur. Okay? Dinosaur. And cut the A short. Okay? So, from the beginning, one and two and one and F sharp. Now your fourth finger will be on the E, up to A, and then a broken D chord. So that's pretty straightforward. Now the hard bit is getting over the top, over the thumb, and then back down. And the cool thing is the next part, bar five in my score, is the reprise of the main theme again. So we're back to our octaves. Over again to F sharp, look. And the cool thing about that opening is, you may have noticed, that the left hand is virtually the same on both parts. The first four bars are repeated on the second four bars, except for one difference, the end goes... We're going E, A, and then the F sharp and the D are just a single D, which of course is our tonic. So here's the whole left hand of the first bit. Here we go. One, and, two, and. Over. Remember that? Dinosaur. One, and broken down. Jump and straight out. Look, little finger. Big stretching of the thumb on the little finger. Over. Looking at the music. Finishing on D. Now that first bit, you would play that in its entirety, the eight bars, twice through. So that's where the left hand sits, right down south. Put the right hand on the keyboard on middle C, move up to the next C octave, and then put your little finger on A, and then lay your fingers out so your thumb is on the D, and your five is on the A. Here we go with the first part. This is the music of the right hand. One, two, A, 
G goes down to D. So that's one, two, E, and, uh, or and maybe a word you could use, one and caterpillar. That works quite well, doesn't it? Caterpillar or macaroni. <laughs> well, whatever word you like to use. One, two. One, two, we and a one caterpillar. That's quite nice. Over the top, we then have to jump ooh, to F sharp. Look at that. That's rather handy. Look. So we use the third finger just as we did on the left hand. So one, two, and one, two, e, and a leap, F sharp. Third finger lays your hand out in that same D, A shape. Now that's handy, look. We've actually got the same pattern as the left hand. So there they are playing in unison, the same thing, but an octave apart. We'll come on to that in a second. We then notice that the left hand repeated. So we go back to the top A again, just as we went down to D, we go back up to our A. So that's the position you have to get used to going. Jump. And then down. And he does the same trick at the end, the repeating with the left hand. So that first part is fairly straightforward once you get confident with jumping around. So have a look at the two hands apart, working on that position up here. Okay, three, jump. Very important to have that hand position. And notice, look, we're at the same place in both octaves. Okay, let's put the first bit together. Left hand, middle C, down to the D, octave below, stretched out. Middle C, right hand, up to C above, move the notes up one, A and D. That's your D position. Okay, the hands are a long way apart, look, but that's okay. Let's try it together. One and two and. Now, notice there, look, I'm playing legato on my left hand. I think that's quite a nice alternative style to the left hand's staccato. The first two quavers go with the crotchet. One and. And then what happens is each pair of right hand qua semi quavers, that's the one with the two lines, go with each of the single quavers. Caterpillar. Two E and. A. One and. Two E and. A. Okay? One. Two E and. A. Keep it going, look. Now, jump to the F sharps, and they will literally play the same thing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So that works well. Let's try that first line again. It becomes more natural by doing it slowly. Notice there, look, my hands are mirror imaging. They're not the same fingers, because the hands are not the same way round but they are moving in the same direction. Now that's the thing you've got to practice there. Jump, and look for the outer notes. It's worth practicing going from D with those fingers and then practicing jumping, look. Gets you used to jumping to those positions. Let's put the first part together, a little quicker. One and two and. slip there, didn't I? Oh well, never mind. <laughs> well, a great start to that piece of music. Let's take a look at the next part. The middle bit uh, was not really the middle, it's the second, the second uh, part of this uh, piece of music, uses again lots of repeating patterns. So we're going to have a look at this right now. We're now going to come up to the A's, A below middle C and A just below. So we're going to now do the same pattern, look, lots of A's for a while. Then this bar, the fourth bar, down to E. One and two and. Just keep 
keep those E's going, look. And then this last bit is where we get a sort of a, an ending to the middle section, the second part. And we're going to go E, D, C sharp, D. I'd probably put my third finger there to release the second. E, A, D, third on the C sharp, dinosaur, A. Notice how we finish on A look because that is our dominant to go back to the D again. By the way, the final part of this piece is simply a repeat of the first part. So this piece is played in three parts. It's in ternary form. That means A, B, A. First section, second section, repeat the first section. So that's our left hand of the middle bit. Lots of A's and E's look. Bum, bum, ba, la, bum, ba, ba. Then go down to E. Da, 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 da. Notice how we've got lots of quavers in the music. Semi quavers. Da, 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 da. So look here, look, I'm going to put my thumb on the D. Three then on the C sharp. Replace the second finger on the D. E, A, D, C, D, E, A. So that's a fairly straightforward left hand. Let's take a look at the right hand. Now we've just finished by going, so we're going to go to A's, C sharp, second finger. So little groups here. Da da da, ba, da da. You hear that rhythm? Look, dinosaur, dinosaur. Nice little repeating uh, rhythm signature of this piece. So C sharp, second finger. Don't use your thumb because the thumb. We don't use the thumb on the black notes unless we have to. So twos and threes work better on black notes. Um, obviously, if you're playing octaves, you do, but in melody work, try and use your index and third finger. Okay, so it's C, D, E, C, D, E, C sharp, obviously. Up to A, and down to E, alternating. A, E, A, E, thumb on the D, cross over four to C sharp. Okay, so that's that first part, look. Two on the C sharp. Those things, just staccato those. Or you could go. You could do one on the D, you could lift your hand. So lift your hand there if you want to, put your five on the D. Okay, now this is where we're going to need a big stretch of the hand, some octave work here. Uh, this bit always sounded a bit odd to me, but it, it just shows how Bart could craft chromatic uh, movements into, into melody lines beautifully. Um, so we're going to go E, D sharp, E, and then a hard D natural. So it's one and two and hold. So make sure you say that after because it ties look over the line to the next D. One and two and hold. C sharp, again using an index finger there up to A, G sharp. Okay, so that's that two bars. Okay, so that little pattern relies on that tied note to be held whilst your other hand is still playing those uh, marching style quavers. C sharp, A, G sharp, reset. Now we've got our final passage now of these little groups. Put your hand like this, look. Four, three, two. Okay. Two sharps there, don't forget, because there's a C sharp in the key signature. One, two. One, two. Caterpillar, caterpillar. One E ender, two E ender. Nice and even. Two on the G sharp. Tuck back to the A. D with four. And then I'd put my three on the C sharp. Here's that rhythm again, look. Jump down to D. Finish on your thumb. And that's the end of your middle section. It then just repeats. So let's now have a look at that middle section, putting it together. So where have we come from? So we're here. So we just quickly lay our hand out, octave A's three on the C sharp, or two, 
Either's good to start with. So again, look, see how those two semiquavers go over the crotchet? Da, da, da. One and da. One. Nice and slow together here, look. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Hold. See how that comes in afterwards, look. Repeat. Okay, so that just takes a little bit of confidence just to hold that D natural down. One and two and one and two and one and two and. Notice the D look, to make that dissonance come out, we give it just a slightly harder press. Now we said four here, didn't we? Caterpillar, caterpillar one and two and da 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 da. Lining up at the end there, look, coming together, look, A, D, unison, unison means one together. And then back to the repeat. And there we have it. The Musette in D by J.S. Bark, a lovely piece of music, well worth having a look at. Split it into two sections when you're learning it. The first part, and the second part. And that will work really nicely, but do split the hands apart, learn the lines independently, and then you'll find that it will come together but do it slowly to start off with. Thanks ever so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video and like to uh, perhaps learn more about uh, when we upload new videos here on Keyboard Skills Pro. We've got lots of videos here on the channel covering organ, piano, keyboard, and music theory. If you've really enjoyed the video and would like to support me as a musician uh, in my work and producing these videos, please do visit patreon.com and uh, search for Keyboard Skills Pro. And if you want, you can um, become a patron of mine and support the production of these videos with a monthly uh, patronage, which would be lovely if you would consider that. In the meantime, please do share the video, comment positively, and enjoy playing the music indeed. Thanks ever so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.